Hi everyone, very warm welcome back to the MetTech Garage. Today we are back on the Supervan Project Plonka. Now, I've already filmed this bit of video, which is why I'm here now recording in the beginning. <laughs> but you would have seen in the last bit of uh, video on, or last episode on the van that the dash area was blanked out so it wouldn't spoil it for this video. Um, that is what we're going to be tackling today. So I've actually already done this job, but we need to sort the dashboard out. We need to sort out any holes, imperfections, whatever else in it. Get it all sorted out, filled, rubbed down, primed, painted and lacquered. And hopefully then we can start obviously getting various bits put in dash, not in this episode, but in future episodes. So I'll pass you over to pass me. We'll crack on and get this done. And hopefully the Supervan dash will be coming back to life. Right, the next job on the van is going to be this dashboard. Now, originally it would have had black vinyl on the top, which I actually did pull off because it was damaged. So I need to get all the residue of that off. As you can see, there's little bits of uh, the vinyl still stuck to it. I also need to get all the glue off that was where the wooden panels stuck onto. We've got a couple of bits of filler work we need to do on there as well. Um, and then we're gonna get it all sanded and prepped and painted so that after we've done that, and obviously a lot of the um, interior sort of switches and steering column and speedo and wire and all that sort of thing can go in. So this is gonna be the next job, it's gonna be sorting out the dashboard um, so yeah it's a bit uh, banky as you can see it's got quite a few different sort of shades of colours on it so we need to get it all looking uniform again so that is going to be the next job I'm going to start by scraping off all that top of the blade see if we can get all that residue of uh, vinyl off and then go from there let's carry on right that is the start of it at least that has been used a scraper along the top to get all that old vinyl off it's then been sanded with the DA I've sanded all the areas on the front there with the, what I can with the DA to get all the glue off where those panels used to be and I've been doing the rest of it by hand now as you can imagine it's very time consuming because all little shapes and lines and indentations and all the rest of it so I haven't time lapsed it because otherwise you'd be very very bored watching me do that so <laughs> it isn't finished yet but that is a very good start to it so I'm going to carry on and uh, get it prepped up as best I can I need to get a little bit of filler mixed up for this area here and this area here um, fill those two holes make them flat because this one shouldn't even be here that one's for the choke but it's broken out so I need to I fiberglassed it from the back when I did all the fiberglass work so I need to fill it from this side now and then we can re-drill the hole and it'll be nice and strong with any luck so yeah it is uh, coming along slowly but surely let's carry on
after an age of sanding we are finally getting somewhere as you can see it is all getting smooth and how it should be now the only issue I've got at the moment is this repair that I've done over here around the indicator stalk has actually been done before and I didn't realize and it's got a lump from about here to about here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rub this back a little bit and I'm going to fill the edge from the edge of the previous repair and fill it to the edge of this line here and feather it out same this way so hopefully it will give the illusion of it being what well, it will be flat because I'll build it up very slightly and then just feather it at the edges that is the plan for that so that is um, hopefully going to be alright now remember when I paint this the only bit you're actually going to see is basically around here along this stripe and into the glove box because this bit has got a, a panel that goes in there over the top of that so is that bit over there and this top bit is all covered in vinyl black vinyl which I'm going to use some thin foam and then vinyl so it gives a little bit of springiness um, and what I'm going to do underneath here so I haven't got a line I'm actually going to run the paint right the way back to the back of the footwell there because the carpet set that you can buy comes right up the sides on both sides but obviously leaves the end of the footwell free so I'm going to go up to that top line now and then that'll be the same colour all the way under there hopefully it should look fairly all right with any luck this bit here is covered in carpet as well um, I have prepped it just so I can run the paint down and just sort of fade it out so that it fades out just above this little hatch so yeah well, I've got a few brackets to get off under there which are remnants of what was there before um, so I'll have to get those off and then we can start getting the underside there prepped up and ready to go and then I'll hopefully be able to get some filler primer on it let's carry on right then as you can see there now the dash is completely rubbed down I've rubbed down all the filler work I actually had about three different coats of filler on this just to get it nice and smooth yeah, only little bits in various areas the main parts were this was the main part over here which is where the indicator stalk mounts now the reason I've obviously filled over it and also this bit here which is where the ignition barrel mounts is that this fiberglass was damaged and I refiberglassed it from the back when I did all the fiberglass work on the van originally and then just needed obviously filling this side so now I need to re-drill these two holes so that obviously the bits can poke through like the indicator stalk and the ignition barrel so that is going to be the next job I'm going to mark out where these are going to go get them drilled you can see roughly where they used to be from the filler marks um, there and there um, and we'll get those remounted so that they're good and then we can start getting a nice coat of uh, filler primer on this hopefully they've also rubbed down underneath here as you can see and it goes right to the back down here um, the carpet obviously goes right up to this edge here so I've gone down to the top of this line both well not that side but this side and obviously down to the line at the back there where it meets and we're just going to go just below it with the paint so that all the bits that you see are the same colour and that should hopefully make it look pretty uniform and nice with any luck so yeah it's coming along pretty good let's carry on radio as you can see there now I've got that first hole drilled for the indicator stalk now I have got a bit not an issue but I've got to do a bit more to it this is the indicator stalk and this actually obviously goes through from the back but when you put it through there's not enough threads to get the little collar on which means it needs to be recessed around that hole on this side so the collar can then wind on and obviously clamp it tight to the dash now come sort of go for a different few thoughts of how I'm going to do that and keep it round and I was speaking to good old Dan and he said why don't you use a flat bait, flat um, wood bit which I had thought of but the problem is obviously because the middle's already drilled out it will skip about so what I'm going to do which is Dan's suggestion is get a piece of wood clamp it behind the dash and effectively in that hole there so that the drill bit has got something to bite into to stop it skipping about and then we can obviously just go really slow and use it to recess around this hole and hopefully that will do the job so that is what I'm going to do I'm going to get this clamped in there and then we'll see how we get on with this uh, flat bit flat bladed bit and hopefully I won't be refilling this again <laughs> let's carry on right as you can see the indicator stalk is now in it did work um, that method but it is slightly off center the recess so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape around that chrome collar and I'm going to actually refill it with that 
in situ so that it goes right up to the edge of it and doesn't leave any gaps and I'm being a bit pernickety and you probably won't even notice it once it's in but I know it's like it so I'm going to try and do that and see how it comes out other than that it's in the, in the dash at least so that's good let's carry on right that is refilled and as you can see I've actually filled it with the switch and the collar in the hole and then I've let it go off as you can see this filler is a bit darker which is why I didn't film it live um, because I put a bit more harder in so that it would go off fairly quickly and uh, you can see that this is the collar which is the tape around it and what I did I put it in the dash filled around it and just as it was starting to go off I unwound this collar so that it left a nice smooth ring around the edge of it which is the right shape and obviously once I take the masking tape off of this then it'll have the thickness of the masking tape which is obviously very thin as clearance for when I want to wind that back in once it's wound into the dash so I'm just this has pretty much gone off now this filler in fact it has gone off so I'm going to get this rubbed back and then we can see how it looks once it's all flat again let's carry on Radio. after a little bit of sanding that is now refitted and I'm much happier with the fit now you can see that collar fits lovely all the way around now let me just zoom in on there a bit so you can see there's pretty much no gap it's just a masking tape gap around it which is absolutely perfect once you get a bit of primer on there, it might need a little rub back but I'm well happy with that so that is job done on the indicator stalk I think that is good to go so now we need to move our attention to that area there which is the ignition barrel Let's crack on. Radio, as you can see, I've got a masking tape line uh, along the original holes for the other switches. This hole is very slightly bigger for the washer um, pump button, but these ones obviously all line up with the top and bottoms of the holes. And as you can see, the mark that I originally drew is pretty much in between those two bits of masking tape. So we are good to go. I think that's roughly where it's got to be. It looks right. So I'm going to get that drilled and hopefully this one won't be as much of a faff as the other one because the lock barrel has got a lot longer thread on it than the uh, indicator switch so you haven't got to recess it so it's just going to literally be a hole for that so should be easy let's carry on right there we go that is the other hole drilled out and this is the barrel that obviously goes through it will look something like that once it's in there obviously the collar goes on the front and holds it in that one just sits on the surface the same as these other ones do along here so that hasn't got to be recessed that is job done as far as the holes in the dash are concerned now we can look at getting some primer on this thing top banana let's carry on rightio this is taking a fair chunk of time but as you can see we're all masked up and I've just given it a wipe over with some panel wipe to obviously degrease it all and make it all so that the paint will stick hopefully so we are on the stage now to get some filler primer on this so let's uh, I'll get you set up on a tripod and we'll give it a Nice uh, cover that. Let's carry on.
everybody else you would have seen that bit of time lapse there the dash has now been wet and dry or wet wet sanded rather i should say with uh, i think i use 600 grit it's ultra ultra smooth now so that is superb so now we can uh, get a top coat on see what it looks like let's crack on Radio. Now that the dashboard has got its top coat on, it's had a good few coats of that now. We're going to be using this, which is 2K lacquer in a can. Now this is the stuff I've spoken to you about before, where you've got a cap that pops off the bottom, and inside there there's a little ring pull, and you hook it onto this little valve on the bottom of the can. I'll get it on basically when you pull it that releases the hard nut into the lacquer itself there you go so you hook that on there like that and all you do is give it one of those see it pulled out pull it a couple of times if you want to it doesn't well i mean it actually stays out on its own so until you push it back in again but i usually just do it a few times just to make sure that it's all got out and then whilst that's out give it a good shake couple of minutes and that will obviously uh, mix up all the lacquer and the hardener. Now this stuff is obviously a lot um, more hard wearing than a normal um, lacquer in a can because it's got the hardener in it so obviously it's got something to actually make it go rock hard the same as what normal car paint would in a, in a, in a spray bush. So I'm going to get this shaken up and then We'll get to putting a layer on here. We'll do a dust coat first just to get our sort of um, something to bite onto, and then we'll do a do that for sort of five or ten minutes and then go over with a sort of medium coat, maybe two medium coats. Get it really uh, got a nice finish, hopefully. And that should be the job done on the dash, and then we can start putting bits in, which is nice. Well, I say putting bits in, putting the steering column in at least, so I can steer it, so that's always good. Be enough, I'd say. It's got like a fan um, adjustment on the back of this little nozzle, so you can have it more or less. Move that bucket out of the way. Get your paint on your bucket. It's quite a. Right. All those of you thinking you should be wearing a mask, yeah, you're probably right, it should be. Those we're not painting too much, it should be okay. It's a little dust flow, I'll leave that for five minutes. I'll go over it again, a bit of a heavier coat. It should be, it's just a good one.
Right, there we are. That is the finished article. That has had two coats, I think, or three coats of lacquer. One of the two, can't remember. You can see the paint goes right the way down to the top edge of the footwell. Obviously, the carpet will overlap that, so you won't see that join. The carpet on this centre section comes right up to here, so you won't see that either. Obviously, same that side. You can see right the way down there. It's all painted all the way up underneath, so it all looks uniform and nice. Now, obviously, there are various holes under there for various things that bolt to it, so there's not a lot I can do about that, but that's just how they are. You can see I put the steering column rubber in there now as well, so that is um, ready to put the steering column in at a later date. Yeah, I think that's come out pretty well, to be fair. The holes that we drilled are okay. You can't see any evidence of filler work there. See that recessed one for the indicator stalks come out nice too. So yeah, we are on a winner, I think. The Superman Dash is looking like a Superman Dash again. I mean, it's not an original color, it's just a color I liked, but you know, this van is definitely not original. <laughs> it's, if you, it's a shame you didn't see it to start with, but it was a total mess as far as there not being much of an original van left. So I've uh, taken it upon myself to do what I like with this van and make it how I want to make it so it's not going to be original but it's going to be uh, hopefully really nice once it's done there we go right then that is going to be it for this episode on Mech Tech we've got the dash sorted out now so at least that can start having things put back in it I'm not sure what order and when yet but at least we're on the route to uh, another job being to what well, that job is ticked off to this we can carry on with other jobs that will carry on to our things now so that is absolutely superb um, not sure what's going to be next on the super van. I haven't decided yet. There, there are various things that I could do next, um, but I haven't even thought that far ahead yet. So <laughs> um, we'll worry about that when we get there. If you do like what you see, maybe consider looking me up on Instagram. I've got mech underscore tech 1985, and I've got Facebook mech dash tech for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. Obviously, if you do like the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. That will tell you every time I upload a video, and obviously share it with all your friends. If you know those people that are into cars and projects and all the rest of it, then obviously give them, give them my, my channel name and let them look me up and hopefully it will make the channel grow a bit better. Um, I'm up to, I think, nearly 800 subscribers now, so doing well. But um, yeah, we need to keep it going so I can obviously grow the channel a bit more, hopefully, and have lots more exciting projects to come. I've got lots of things that I want to do on cars and, and film and whatever else and various different models and makes, so not just going to be reliant as you would see from all my past videos there's all sorts of different makes and models that i've worked on so you know if you like a variation then this is the place to be <laughs> um so yeah thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it everyone who's watching and subscribed and everything else and all that's left for me to say is if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures i'll see you again next time cheers guys <laughs>